How many of you have ever missed your flight connection because your previous flight was delayed? Please raise your hands. <laughs> this is bad. But did you know that mechanical failure is only the 10th most frequent reason why flights delay? A lack of integrity between offline and online systems, poor data integration between them, poor customer experience, um, of legacy systems who are still being used are common reasons why flights delay. Airports, airlines are losing hundreds of millions of dollars because of poor customer experience. And we as passengers are experience are losing our time, money, and brain cells because of that. My name is David Yang. I started 11 companies, including Abby, which provides AI software content intelligence for thousands of companies, and we know how important customer experience is. Today, we have panelists who are true champions in customer experience. They will tell us their secrets, their knowledge, how to fix this huge <laughs> problem. So let me again um, present and welcome Amy Pressman, co-founder of Medallia, a leading customer experience management platform, and Alicia Tillman, chief marketing officer of uh, SAP, the world largest um, enterprise software solution. So, what are you guys doing uh, for your clients and the clients of your clients to uh, for, to provide a superior customer experience? Um, Amy, why don't you start? Uh, th that is our business. Medallia is a customer experience management um, software, and we work with everything from B to C to B to B to help companies deliver exceptional customer experiences. Um, and our basic idea is um, we, we put the data about customer experience into the hands of everybody in an organization and help them unleash everybody to deliver a great customer experience. So how many of you, when you go to buy something that you've never bought before, will go online to look at ratings and reviews, right? Most of you, now think about this, in your um, job at work, how many of you are looking at customer experience data when you're making decisions that are ultimately gonna trickle down to the, to the customer? Can I, not so many, right? So we need to close that gap between how customers are observing and, and acting on customer experience and how companies are. I yeah, see. so for, for SAP, um, we offer technology to help companies uh, run more efficiently in their back office and then we offer innovation and technology to help drive superior customer experiences. And connecting the both together uh, with SAP Leonardo, which is our modern technology that deploys things like artificial intelligence and machine learning, it connects both your back office and your front office so that your customers can deliver the most unrivaled customer experiences to enable them to, to grow their business and to retain the existing customers they have. I saw that video of uh, SAP when uh, uh, the uh, electrician, it was a stadium, remember? Yes, yes. In incredible, <laughs> a, a stadium, so it's about to start the, 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 the game and thousands of people are waiting and the, and the electricity is just shut down mm -hmm. and the, your, the electrician comes to the door <laughs> and he has a virtual um, uh, VR system, knows how, what, how to open the door, one, uh, navigates in time, yeah. remember? Yeah, and, and, and that's, we, we just actually unveiled uh, last week with uh, the uh, San Francisco 49ers at Levi's Stadium. I mean, talk about a first when it comes to an NFL team to deliver technology in real time to allow, allow the 49ers administration to know what's happening during a game. Everything from parking jams to challenges at food and beverage to problems with the restrooms. Previously, it took administration three days to understand the reports in terms of 
the customer, the fan experience, now we're delivering that information to them real time. So during the game, and I had a chance to, to visit uh, them during the Raiders game last Thursday night, which we finally got a win in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> um, and to see this boardroom in action so that they were able to reduce waiting times to park, reduce waiting times at food and beverage stations, and then improve the overall rest, restroom experience. It was um, unbelievable to be able to see the changes in the fan experience. Fantastic. And I know you guys work together, right? So yes. SAP is your customer. Yep. So how, how, did, it, how did you start? I mean, uh, did, you, uh, did your sales cycle was long? How, how did you sell your technologies to SAP? I do not remember the specifics. You do not <laughs> remember? <laughs> Come um, on. <laughs> but but I, I can tell you, we, I mean, the sales cycle is is fairly similar to enterprise Simple. software. Simple. I don't believe. No, no, no. Similar. Similar. It's, it's okay. Similar. And and I think that what you're really helping com companies understand is that customer experience is the way people buy, even in a sense in enterprise software. So we used to think that enterprise software would um, have one level of customer experience, and then what you would buy as a customer in sort of B to C would be another level. But the reality is we're all human beings, we all buy something as a customer and then turn around and in our jobs, maybe with an enterprise, are buying something there. And we're starting to blend what we think of as possible in terms of a great customer experience. So the demand for a better customer experience, even with enterprise software, is is accelerating, just as it is so in the demand world. is. So we go in and we, we, we talk to very senior people within companies and we talk about, um, you know, the um, importance of customer experience experience and you know where the gaps are in terms of the customer experience they think they're delivering and and what the customers are actually experiencing and in, and in, in large enterprise software companies you typically will have multiple relationships across multiple divisions and the, the company doesn't have real overview of what that total uh, relationship with the customer is so we help sort that out and help company even enterprise software deliver great customer experience and how big are your customers um how big are the cost, uh, uh, companies who are using your platform? I mean, we have, you know, the Global 2000, the Fortune 10, the Fortune 500. I mean, we, we, we can have hundreds of thousands of users on our platform logging in. Hundreds daily. of thousands so of users inside one in, company. Inside one company. And uh, when it starts from how small customers you have? Uh, we we also have you know um, smaller businesses Small, that can like use what? it. Yeah, thousand people. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, we 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 have some that are that small, or tip, or we can go into a, one division in a larger company and and prove the value and then um, expand it out. Okay. Um, okay. Then let me ask this thing: when it comes uh, to improving customer experience, um, what problems uh, do you face? What has worked and what hasn't? Uh, can you bring some examples of what hasn't worked when you try to provide your uh, you know, customer, good customer experience to your clients and it didn't work? So what I think typically doesn't work for improving customer experience is like kind of what we did, I like to say, in the last century, where it's a very command and control. You, um, you give people a lot of data, but then you give them very restrictive um, protocols to operate within. And essentially today, companies need to be a lot more flexible and nimble, and they need to give an overview to everybody in the organization. This is how we think about customer experience, but give people a lot wider berth to experiment and try things. And if you look at the companies that are outperforming, um, you will find that they are innovating and trying things and decentralizing decision making much more than some of those more rigid kind of command and control structures. So I think that is one thing that needs to change dramatically, even in the big companies, and we see it happening. Okay. Uh, we have a question from the audience, and uh, can I ask this question um, uh, to uh, Alicia? Uh, what role does customer experience play in the B2B sales process? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it plays an incredible role because, I mean, it, as we know, over 80% of buying decisions happen before a single interaction with a company. And so what that means is that buyers today are uh, judging and absorbing and learning. Um, and a lot of that happens through the experience with the brand. Um, and it's not just their own personal experience, but it's those that are in their influencer web as well. And so customer experience plays a leading role. Uh, companies today win and lose business based on their customer experience. Um, and it's not Please just bring about- bring some examples. It's, this yeah, is interesting. Yeah, so um, there is over a trillion dollars in the US alone that is lost by organizations because of poor customer experiences. Things such as holding for too long to deal with a customer service issue. Um, or not having a speedy response time if they log an issue into a digital platform. Um, these are some fundamental issues that uh, buyers and customers are facing today as it relates to poor customer experiences, you know, calling a, a service number and being navigated to the wrong department or the wrong division. You know, we've all experienced those challenges. And so when you think about the opportunities that are created now with advanced technologies, and I know we'll, we'll talk about this in a minute, um, companies today have an ability to use technology more to their advantage to improve the customer service um, in the very reasons as to why customers leave companies in the first place because of poor interactions, lack of response time, lack of remedy to situations that you're trying to solve. Technology can be an answer today in so many of those cases, and I'm happy to use some examples if you're interested in them to talk about where that can help solve. Okay. Okay. Can I just add to um, yeah. Alicia's comment? I, I think that customer experience is the biggest driver of purchase behavior today, period. If you look at all kinds of um, uh, you know, market research uh, from Nielsen, from Deloitte, you name it, you will find between two thirds and three quarters of people will look online at the ratings and reviews, uh, that is the customer experiences of others before making a purchase decision. So mm -hmm. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. it, it is the biggest driver of purchase behavior. Yeah. We have a question for me uh, for um, Emmy. Uh, where is it? It was right here. How does Medallia works? How does Medallia work? Work. Uh, so we go in and we gather all the kind of customer data that a company has. We can also augment it. So we will do survey data. We can do uh, social media data. We do all the data about customers in various systems that a company may have, like point of sale system, call center systems. And then in real time, we distribute that out to the entire organization. Um, and we do it with role-based dashboards. And and then we do it in the way that people work. So we have a mobile app that is more sticky than Twitter, only slightly less sticky than Facebook. We have dashboards on laptops. We Every way that, that people are working today, we are feeding in that data to people so that they can take action on it. And then we make action really easy. So what we're trying to do is unleash the entire organization to make improvements, you know, be it at the front line all the way up to the C-suite of that. I see. Yeah. Uh, Alicia, you mentioned that uh, long wait time and, uh, and uh, let's um, uh, talk about RPA, robotic process automation. Uh, that, um, this is something which also works for, um, you know, when uh, the operator doesn't need to in, uh, input the address change in several legacy systems, but actually uh, enters one in one place and it automatically re-enters to other systems. So. Um, uh, this is, um, I, I saw also your, uh, that loop, infinity loop mm -hmm. of combining all, you know, online uh, backend and front end systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is it um, a corporate, big corporate strategy or, um, or how, 
how do you perceive um, you, the strategy of your company uh, in uh, with this customer experience all concept? Yeah, I mean, at SAP, we are focused on creating intelligent enterprise. Um, enterprises for companies of all sizes. And this means that we have an ability through technology today to enable companies to run at their best in the back end, connect it to your modern technologies, uh, as I mentioned, artificial intelligence and machine learning as examples, to work to connect to the innovation that you're delivering on the front end, which enables the customer experience and, and our ability to do that. And I'll talk about um, technology as an, an enabler in particular. Um, machine learning, as an example, has an ability to read both structured and unstructured data. And your ability to create and understanding at a customer service level, the experiences that I shared a few moments ago about routing you to the right department or being able to service tickets faster in a more efficient way. This is where machine learning should absolutely be embraced and adopted because of their ability to read the both unstructured and structured data, it allows you to enable chatbots at the point of sale so that you can automate those tasks that are becoming the very reason 17% of businesses lost today because of the automated experience that companies have in play or the slowness in response time, our ability to deploy these modern technologies such as machine learning so that we can, through data, create these experiences so that the phone gets answered faster, you're routed to the appropriate person, the disruptions in service can be solved more quickly. These are enhancements that frankly, not only create intelligent enterprises, but they create more intelligent experiences that then start to overturn and define the way modern customer experience should be run in industries today. Is, and as I understand what you have just, uh, you just described is actually happening today, right? Yeah. So it's actually all the chatbots and uh, uh, big data analysis is now already is helping Absolutely. your systems. Absolutely. And the other thing that I would say too is um, there's a certain level of fear and anxiety that robots are going to take over a lot of jobs uh, in our economy. And, and I would argue that it's actually quite the contrary. Uh, employees don't like to focus on the busy tasks that take a lot of time and often are quite ineffective. They want to focus on the high value strategic types of responsibilities that get them out of bed every single morning. Yeah. And if you think about where you deploy things like chatbots, it's to deal with those busy tasks to allow you the capacity to in fact focus on those things that bring you more job satisfaction. It's actually very good that you brought this um, uh, AI concept. Uh, AI is now changing everything. It uh, has completely changed our lifestyle over the past few years. And uh, uh, let's say banking. We at Abbey just finished a project with uh, one of the largest banks in the world. And now you can capture your video of your documents and actually see the analyzed in real time and get your loan approved in seven minutes. Great. So, uh, you just described what's happening right now already with AI, but let's think about future in 10 years, in 15 years. Just very quickly, uh, if you would uh, describe customer experience of the future with the, this uh, touch of AI, what would it look like? Your two minutes kind of futuristic vision. So I think uh, that AI, had, I mean, we're just at the beginning, um, and I think that you're going to have getting rid of a lot of repetitive tasks and being able to create an experience um, for, uh, for users and then for the recipients that is fantastic. But I don't think it's going to replace human beings. I, I think that ultimately what we see with customer experience is there's, you know, some, there needs to be some blend of artificial intelligence and 
and human intelligence. And I don't think that AI will ever replace it. I think you'll just be able to have the humans focusing on the things that are higher value add, that are less the repetitive tasks that should be automated. So I think it's just going to lead to a better and better experience, but we're never going to replace that sort of ultimate human interaction. Alicia. Yeah, you know, and, and I would agree with what Amy's saying. I, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about customer experience um, being the single differentiation of, of brand today. Um, the other thing I think is a differentiator, and this is only going to continue to grow, and I say this in context of our conversation because it's very important to the point that Amy was making, is that artificial intelligence is really going to help solve a lot of the busy work, as I was saying, that no employee likes to focus on. But it will not replace this human empathy, this human emotion, this human intelligence that is absolutely also part of buying decisions today. At the point of sale in the US alone, decision making is led not just by feature function, it's almost become table stakes from a product perspective. Consumers today, especially the millennial generation, they're making decisions based on companies that stand for something. Companies that are focused on good, companies that are giving back. That is not something that technology is going to solve, but technology can help to enable that. Every company, no matter what size you are in the world, you have a platform. I also believe you have a responsibility. And while technology can help us solve some of those mundane customer experience tasks that we can all benefit from, it allows us the increased capacity to frankly focus on really what is differentiating brands today, and that's purpose. And so our being able to create programs and strategies so that our companies and us as employees of companies can stand for something and make a difference, that's the beauty of what this technology can help us solve on one end to allow us the creativity to be able to focus on it and create real brand differentiation. Um, absolutely agree with uh, everything we just heard. I would m probably add one more thing that uh, actually I also saw it in your um, kind of uh, futuristic um, uh, videos. Uh, prediction. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, AI allows us not only to follow the past and understand what is now, actually predict what will happen. So uh, when the speed train comes to the uh, stop, actually a, uh, using this AI customer sure. experience powered systems, people can change some modules before they fail yes. because they know they will fail. Mm -hmm. And it's happening also, it, it's always, oh, we are almost there, it's very mm -hmm. close, right? Mm -hmm. And predictive analytics and, and using that with chatbots, when you're in the middle of a situation, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, it's our ability to predict, gives us an ability to improve, and then customer experience wins. Fantastic, let's make it happen as soon as possible. <laughs> and on that note, please uh, say thank you to our guests, uh, Amy and Alicia, and thank you all for coming. Thank you. Okay.